Oh, hello guys. Welcome to Benny Hanna Cooking Tutorial. So, um, today we're cooking in bulk and mass, healthy as possible because we gotta start hitting the beaches soon, um, even though it's the dead of winter. So, um, let me introduce the set list. What we're planning on doing today is we have a bunch of chicken, about enough for 15 portions worth, about 10 chicken breasts. Okay, and we're gonna season that two different ways. Black and butter, it's gonna be nice. Also, the second version of them, half and half, in case you want to differ, you know, a spread, garlic butter, lemon pepper, so we'll make a lemon pepper garlic chicken. For the sides now, <laughs> the major sides, we have three pounds of broccoli that we're gonna roast and toast all kinds of good ways. It's really just one way, but maybe season two ways, we'll see. Two pounds of Brussels for the muscles, my people. Oh, I'm getting too excited. And finally, for the carbohydrate source, let's not get it twisted. We need our energy, guys and girls. Roasted potatoes. Wait, wait. Baked potatoes. And we found a wonderful recipe on the internet that I'm actually going to share the link to uh, if you just click in the little description of the video. Dessert. We're going we're gonna to stay on the healthy train, y'all. I've never really done this before, but we're gonna give it a try. We have one of these, uh, what's this called, Hannah? Butternut squash. Butternut squash. And we are going to cover, we're gonna dust that with some scrinamon from Saigon. I don't know where that is, but turn up. <laughs> and then we're gonna drizzle some honey on top and then we're gonna grill it. So this is a partial in, indoor and outdoor cooking show where we're gonna grill out there and then also utilize the stove since we are cooking in mass. So, as our base for the oils, we'll be using avocado oil, and for all you southerners out there, blue bonnet butter. Highly processed, but delicious. And as far as tools, I'm sure everybody is, you know, thinking that they don't have these things at home. Not true at all. We have my weapon of choice. Uh, I don't know, it's about a 12-inch blade. I don't really, I really don't know. I bought this set on Amazon. Uh, a cutting board, of course, to do all the choppy and, and cutty things. Uh, we're going to use some Reynolds wrap. Shout out Winston-Salem. It's actually made in where we are filming today. Um, you're going to need a bowl to mix the seasonings in and to push some extra stuff in, maybe. And then two large baking pans. One to go onto the grill and the other one to go onto the grill, too, but with different stuff on them. I'm talking vegetables, y'all. Okay, to start off any cooking adventure the first thing you want to do is get your hair out of your face and off the food this is just disgusting dude okay and the second most important thing is once you have your bun high and tight okay mm -hmm. you want to sanitize now as our lovely camera girl just told us she lost her job at subway and not washing her hands <laughs> Hannah, introduce yourself. Turn <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Hannah, and yes, I did get uh, fired from Subway for not washing my hands in front of the customer. So, step one, always wash your hands. And she was wearing leggings on the job. It's not professional. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know how to wash your hands, you sing Happy Birthday. That'll be the full 20 seconds, and it's a good rhythm. Happy Birthday. Okay, we're not going to do that today, though. Because I was already watching it as she was introducing herself. And this isn't a singing show, this is a cooking show. Okay, we are sanitized and ready to go. And for those of you who do not know, these are called happy glasses. They're $2 at Dollar General. You put them on and they make you happy. <laughs> Isn't that right, Joel? Mm. Who can say no to that? $2 is cheaper than a lot of. A lot of things I've spent for trying to feel. Anyway, okay, so we're gonna start <laughs> off with uh, the thing that takes the longest. Gotta collect myself, sorry, ladies and gentlemen. The baked potatoes will take about 55 minutes. If you will read the recipe, tag below, link and stuff. So what we have done is put the old uh, oven at 450 degrees, and all we're gonna do is just toss these on top. Uh, very simple, really. It is in the two phases, however. So, since I don't have enough pans for all this, what I have done is I have laid down foil 
on top of this and I preheated it already to spare you all the time. So, there's my freaking oven mitts, dude. I threw it away. Okay. First rack. Potatoes. Did you poke holes in them? Oh, that's right. I'm gonna use this as a call up sign to you. Okie dokie. And typically, I don't condone violence. But what if I wanna use a knife though? Okay, we should probably, in case there are children watching, <laughs> we'll use a fork. So like I said, I usually like to, you know, hug trees, not kill plants, but these things will explode according to the internet. Though I have baked many a potato and never has one exploded. So I question the validity of the science, but part of this is very therapeutic. No, this is not two speed people. This is Samurai <laughs> Chef. <laughs> I'm cooking, bro. Shit. either, especially when you're cooking fast. All right. Oh my God, camera girl number one. It's okay. These Behind also, the scenes. These are also from Amazon. They're only $20. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're back to the oven, which was preheated to 450, freshly, Freshly stabbed uh, potatoes. Okay, pull out this bottom rack. I've laid down some Reynolds wrap. Probably don't do that. Stack them in a way that they will roll. And we are gonna go ahead and just place them out. I'm three at a time on the bottom rack. Oh, they're sizzling, baby. The potatoes are screaming. Now, I read on the internet that rusted potatoes are the best because they have the thickest peels. Once again, I didn't fact check, but it sounds like the wallets are outright. And the best part of the potato is actually the peel. Back me up, Hannah. True that. It's got all the potassium. The skin. More, more than a banana, according to the sign on the potato bag. <laughs> also didn't fact check. Okay. Check your nutrition labels, y'all. Make sure to read those and also look up things. Um, so we have all the potatoes in. Slide that back real slow because the potatoes will roll. They are rotund in nature. Gravity affects them the same way it affects you. Okie dokie. So this actually calls for two baking rounds. The first one we're going to do 20 minutes, to, uh, wait, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Start. And what that's going to do is it's going to get the skins nice and crispy. Okay. After that 25 minutes, we're going to take them out. We're going to dust them with a little bit of butter or olive oil and then put it back in there. So that way it absorbs the, the skin, absorbs, it soaks up the butter and then recrisps along with some thicker granular salt. So that way it adds some crunch to it and also some flavor. Um, next up, we're going to do the broccoli. <laughs> The one thing I remember from medical school is that it does affect your liver enzymes if you eat too much of it. But everything is the dose. The dose is the poison. We only have one portion per meal, so it'll be okay. I don't want to scare anybody. Broccoli is good for you. Um, oh, yeah, the mixing bowl. This is why we prepared everything and got it out ahead of time. So we didn't have to rifle through things like an idiot during our first ever cooking experience. So we have three pounds of wild broccoli. I didn't catch it, so I don't know if it's wild or not. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't catch it. <laughs> okay, so mm -hmm. what we're gonna do here is the avocado oil, some of the garlic, and uh, the salt. So we've got this rolling. This is actually a brand new garlic, so I'm gonna have to pop the top off, and I apologize for wasting three seconds of your life. But, the, but I do it so fast, it's like, okay. And for those of you who know who I 
did that is because I don't have the finger strength to get these little things. I struggle with it every time. And I've learned that maybe aggression sometimes is the answer. Okay. <laughs> so we've got that. So first of all, we'll apply a thin layer of avocado oil. You can use olive oil, that's fine too. Uh, once again, on the internet, it said not to use extra virgin. I, I didn't fact check, but that's what they said. It's the smoke point. This, okay, go on. Okay. Extra virgin olive oil has a lower smoke point um, than avocado oil. So you can cook it at higher heats for longer. Perfect. So this will be at 450, which is a pretty high heat. I've never been in 450 degree weather, but it sounds hot. <laughs> okay, so there's that. And we're gonna do some salt, but I wanna crunch it up first. It's over here. There, it's hidden. Huh. Oh. Okay, so I buy bulk Celtic sea salt because first of all, it's cheaper. Second of all, this is supposed to be like the best salt for you. And, um, I didn't know that I was bougie when it came to salt, but I am. Sodium chloride, which is like, a million minerals is what this has, so it can only be good. Where'd you buy it from? Oh yeah, this is on Amazon also. <laughs> $15 for a pound. It's non-GMO, thank God, which I sure hope. They can GMO salt? Good God. Okay, so I crunch up the salt into little finer pieces. And this also makes me feel very, uh, like, med medicine manny, but... Okay, and I've always wanted to do this too. Salt bae, but on broccoli, not big pieces of meat because we have a balanced diet and we're not one dimensional. Okay, so we're gonna do that. And then gradually do every one of these. I'm just gonna toss it. Give it a gentle toss. And if you are a little bit OCPD or a perfectionist, you can add another layer of the garlic to make sure it gets every square. I don't know. What do you call these little sections of a Brussels sprout? It's like stems. It's like a mini. It looks the same if you zoom in versus like this right here. You see? That's what I'm saying. Oh. Nice. Actually, what kind of sample things are you cooking? Just don't be touching your fingers and your mouth. It's, it's gross. This is 2021. Okay, stay sanitary. <laughs> okay. That is seasoned appropriately. So what we're going to do is we're going to take another pan, more Reynolds wrap, because this pan has seen better days. I wouldn't put my broccoli on it. R.I.P. R.I.P. But if you put foil down, it's like it's clean again. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to evenly distribute the broccoli. Oh my God. Yeah, this is a lot of broccoli. Okay. 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 So we're actually going to re we're going to rinse and repeat since we have so much broccoli. We have so much broccoli that it won't all fit on the pan. So or into the bowl or on the pan. So, this is a five feet pan. Also, you do want to have, I'm guilty of this, you do want to have a garbage can near you so you don't make too much of a mess and always recycle. And since I did touch the probably... garbage can, I'm going to wash my hands again. Because we don't want to be like Hannah. Is that right? <laughs> nope. Not today, not tomorrow. Times are hard, we can't be losing our jobs at Subway. <laughs> Best job I ever had, hands down. <laughs> okay, so same thing. So this is actually good for y'all. It's educational. Thin layer of avocado oil. Dust it with a little bit, not a little bit, a lot of bit of garlic because this shit is delicious. I mean stuff. Sorry, mom. <laughs> okay. And these are already all crunched up. So we'll just go ahead and apply another layer of that. And, you know, some people... Um, like a bunch of salt, some people like not that much. So I try to do it in the middle and then people can always adjust as needed. The freaking spin. And this is why you take organized from people because you will want to raise whatever you're looking It's in the, it's in the uh, sink. Found it. Oh. Clean. 
It was never dirty. See, this fell out. But guess what? Mine got caught. Some things were meant to be. Mmm. And honestly, it needs to be a lot more distributed than that. <laughs> but we're in a hurry. Spread it out to the best of your abilities. And if we need to, we can turn it or something like that later. Delicious. These are washed and ready to eat. Are they? We're gonna rinse them. I'm gonna put this down. Okay, so we have two pounds of, of uh, brussels for the muscles, so that your muscles may sprout. <laughs> you need to eat brussels sprouts. Get that. Give it a quick rinse. Online, I have read that you're supposed to use white vinegar and hot water and throw all your vegetables in there to get all those chemicals and pesticides and things off. And I'm sure that works and it sounds like a great idea. But live fast, die young. Okay, okay. So these are also called tiny cabbages. They take a long time to cook and it's kind of frustrating. But I think that broccoli is going to take longer. So the question is, do we cut them in half so they cook faster? Or do we leave them like this and just say it'll be okay? Hannah? More flavor if you cut them open. That's what we ask our uh, experts on set. <laughs> so you got to be careful with these little guys because they will roll away. Once again, they are spherical in nature. <laughs> First try. And we're gonna go pretty fast here, but for the sake of time and entertainment, um, I'm gonna tell a story as we are moving through these. So, um, seizure. I don't have a story, let's do a lecture. So cooking, and my experiences when I first started with it, I was trash, yo, I was trash. So I pretty much burned all the chicken and all the vegetables in like the same tray at the same time at like a million degrees and covered it with like cheap vegetable oils and a bunch of salt. But that was back when I was trying to bro down all the time on a budget, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So when I first started, I definitely did not look things up and uh, I was guessing at a lot of it. So I had a lot of mistakes, but I also had low standards. So it didn't matter, so I ate it every anyway. Ain't that right, Joel? Mm. Desperate times calls for desperate measures. And you do want to pay attention when cutting these, you know, it seems like it's a simple process, but it only takes one time to chop your finger off. And all that sanitation we would have done would be for naught. Okay. About halfway through was it. Uh, tell them a story about my uh, cooking adventures. Um, so yeah, I used to just burn a bunch of meat and vegetables and call it healthy and call it good. And, and honestly, it did work. It's better than going to like, I don't know, getting fast food or ordering some crap from the cafeteria. So better than nada, but not by much. -a. And I eventually had put some time into this, I guess you could say, and it got decent at it from a, from, you know, a very bro and relaxed position, which means like, you just gotta have fun with it. Like, you're not gonna get it perfect the first time, especially if you've never done it before. You should really expect yourself to fail about 10 times in a row before it comes out right. But if you have a good sensei, it should not take you 10 times to get something right. That's ridiculous. So we're gonna do our best to get it right on the first try. Put your stomach, dude. <laughs> yeah, watching you cook. Bro. Yeah, so my 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 good brother there is waiting for dinner to be ready, and we can hear his belly rumble. Okay. Okay, y'all. For your viewing pleasure, we have go ahead. We went ahead and cut the Brussels sprouts, seasoned them, and uh, mixed them and put them on the next pan. For that one, we did use the blackening rub, and we brought our friend Cayenne Pepper out to play. 
just because these little guys do absorb a lot of flavor and I feel like it's my personal duty to maximize your taste buds today. Taste buds, not taste buds. I'm not from Britain or whatever. <laughs> Those are all ready to go, evened out. Get the grease off already, put the oil off my fingers because you want it. And we have begun cutting the butternut squash. And as I was saying earlier, as I figured out, these are also tubular in nature and will roll when you're trying to cut them, so be very delicate. And we're going for half inch slivers here. It's okay if you get the measurements off. That just means one will be a little firmer and one will be a little squishier. And you wanna have a really sharp knife and a really steady hand. <laughs> Otherwise, this could cost you the rest of your cooking career. Jesus Christ. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and cut this last part vertical because it is now a threat to mankind. To Ben kind. Ow. Good call, Joel. No distractions. No distractions. I put it over my bun. <laughs> <laughs> Better. Turn up, dudes. <laughs> Let's party. <laughs> These little guys seem to have pumpkin seeds, which makes sense because they're kind of like a pumpkin. Get those out of there. You gotta get the guts out. The organs. Why is that orange stuff good for you, Hannah? Is it beta carotene? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Is it beta carotene? I don't know. Joel, Google it. Do what? Is it orange because of beta carotene like carrots? Well, yeah. Oh, I thought you were asking what the yeah. the slimy stuff is. No, those are guts. I mean. That's mucus. Yum. Okay, my bruise and my bras. I know this is taking a while. And at least it's entertaining and a lot easier to cut these little guys when they're sliced in half. So I think next time we'll go ahead and just do this first. Or we'll do a better favor and just cut this out of the video so you don't have to watch all this. You got it. y'all y'all know the drill Ooh. i was gonna break this in half but they're stronger than i thought they were in there honestly this would probably go best with some butter but i don't have any melted on me so we're gonna use oil but we don't need much because they're already a little juicy so i would recommend melting butter and pouring it on here first and honestly you could put the cinnamon and the honey in the bud. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay, we're gonna do that. What are we doing? Oh yeah, so we are melting the butter and we are gonna put the cinnamon in there and the honey. So that way, oh yeah. It's a comfortable amount of butter. Probably a little more butter than you think because we are in the South, y'all. Saigon Scrinnamon. First try. I'm just saying it's easier. I would say probably a tablespoon or two. What do you think? Sure. Yeah, it looks like two tablespoons to me. So there's that. Go ahead and melt that bad boy. 30 seconds maybe? Sure. So I usually potatoes. Oh yeah. Thanks for catching the alarm bell. So but the potatoes have been in there for 20 minutes, my bruise and my bras. Which means it's time to pull them out. <gasps> Not the cowboy hat. <laughs> 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 
Okay, so these are ready to go. And I think what we're gonna do is we learned our lesson last time. Don't grab a hot potato. <laughs> they literally make songs about it. <laughs> Recommend Tom's. Good. Done. It was heavy. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna put these bad boys back. And we are going to drizzle some um some more salt. Is that my hair? God. I have to, I have to fix the hair and rewash the hands. Because if you get it in your food, people like to start calling health agencies, and next thing you know. You'll be living on the beach because you can't afford insurance. Delete it out. Huh? Delete it out. You're going to delete this whole bar right here. No, it's important to know that you, sometimes you have failures. <laughs> So we do have, we took a break from the butternut squash because the butter was microwaving. We're gonna go ahead and do this because it's next up. We're gonna go ahead and dust, not really dust. You can use butter or you can use olive oil, but ultimately we're just gonna drizzle some over them. And this looks kind of hot to be honest. And at the end of the day, <laughs> if you, <laughs> What we're gonna do is put some salt on there and it's gonna make the skin get nice and crispy. And yeah, might as well just use more than what you think. It's 2021 and the world's ending, so you might as well have some fun. Use an extra oil. <laughs> The recipe calls for pretty granular salt, so I'm actually not gonna, Jesus, Mary, Joseph, getting out of the controller. We don't want to overdo it with the granule size, otherwise they won't stick to the oil. But go too thin and you won't get the texture that you need, according to the internet. Okay, okay. So we're gonna potato bay. Oh, salt bay. Okay, I think it needs to be a little crunchier than that. A little bigger, but it's bouncing off the potato. Not what we need. Okay, we're there, we're there. Okay, we need to go a little faster. Typically, I would like to have these all spread out so you could dust them individually, but like I said, we are balling on a budget around here. I will be going to Goodwill to buy some new pots and pans. Okay. So we're just gonna call that good because we don't have all day. We're gonna put these bad boys back in the oven for 20, 25 more minutes. Have your tongs ready. Uh, the knit's also ready. And one at a time. Do this. Steffi. Ha ha! <laughs> <laughs> 
promise if you can go quick enough. Oh my god. Okay, we're gonna avoid that. Once again, that's how the song started. <laughs> Okay. Starting to sweat. Oh, you can hear him sizzling in the butter. Olive oil, I apologize. Okay. See, the skins are already starting to flake off a little bit. That's a perfect sign. Now that they're nice and oily and salty, you're going to get a nice texture on them. And honestly, I was able to get them all on the bottom rack, and I really don't feel like going outside because it's kind of cold. So we're gonna go ahead, since these take 20 minutes too, we're gonna go ahead and throw in our broth balls, and we're gonna throw in our brock that rocks, dude. <laughs> if it'll fit. Uh-oh. Close enough. Close that back away. Please fit, please fit, please fit. Yes. Some things were meant to be. Oh. Okay, back to our, where are on these? Tw you can do 25, that's fine. Thank you. Our butter and cinnamon is melted. We're gonna add some honey. Three tablespoons, roughly estimating. Give it a swirl. We're swirling, we're swirling, we're swirling. Do you want to cut these up? No, that'll be good. Yeah, no, we're not going to cut those anymore. They're already cut. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at that. Beautiful. Wonderful. You get all the goodness. We don't waste nothing around here. We're balling on a budget. Balling on a budget is a way of life. And now these are all drizzled and ready to go uh, for the most part. So we're out of the grill area. Oh, we're not. We're going to use the grill downstairs for this and the chicken. So that's good to go. And finally, to season the chicken, everybody. Olive oil as a base, you just kind of estimate. I probably used too much right there. And we said that we were gonna do half of this with the, uh, we call it stuff. We're gonna do half lemon pepper garlic and we're gonna do half with the blackened um, and a little bit of spice to it, you feel me? So that's all olive oiled up. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this right now. I use those, so now to get a nice olive oil coating. Do you feel me, dog? So that's coated, and we need to separate half of them because we're going to do half. Use a plate for this. We're going to do half chicken over here, and then when they are separated, then we will season the other half with, as we spoke about, or it's more than we have here. Half. We have our blackening rub for the first go round. And we're just gonna dust it. You can put a lot on their chicken breast or a little bit thicker. So only the seasoning is gonna be on the surface and then a little bit will absorb. So we really wanna hit it with the goodness. And you just kind of eyeball it and, you know, eventually after you do it a couple rounds, you'll figure out how much you as an individual like because it's about, you know, it's about your preferences personally. This is a rough outline to be modified. That makes a pretty gross noise. Okay. And just by eyeballing, I can tell, see, look, look, there's some parts of the chicken that are not covered in this goodness. So that's a sign that you need to probably overdo it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. I'm right there. Garlic on me. Oh yeah. Oh 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay, Jackie. Um, I'm gonna throw a little more cayenne on just because I do like a little spice. So here's our first go round, y'all. And we're gonna go ahead and swap this out for this over here. One, two, three, four, five. And we're gonna rinse it out so we can get crossover seasonings. Toss in the other chicken breasts so that we can season them differently. And honestly, teaching really helps me because it makes me think about what I'm doing instead of just being an idiot. Okay, okay. So you rinse your tongs too? Yeah, sure that. It's too late. And we have with us our delicious Butterhouse steak rub. I haven't had it yet. So I, it smells incredible. It smells like butter. Tastes incredible. It smells like popcorn butter. So it could only be good. Shazam! <laughs> okay, I probably overdid that a little bit. Or did I? Okay. I forgot to olive oil it up. Good. Goody. Oh, yes, that looks delicious. Goodness gracious. Oh, more garlic, garlic for the freaks, am I right? <laughs> that was done. <laughs> <laughs> garlic for the freaks, yes. Yeah. Okay, that looks nice and buttered. Do you think it, do you think it needs some uh, lemon pepper? We said lemon pepper, huh? This has... It doesn't have lemon in it. We'll just do enough to say we use it. Lemon pepper in the crunchy form. So this is another thing I've always wanted to do. Three and four, and I like to do sets because this is a nice forearm pump, believe it or not. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. We are seasoned there really well, nice and crunchy. All right. So. I think we're missing a piece. There's nine pieces of chicken. We're supposed to have ten. Dang. Be okay. All right. So we're good to go there. And here. We'll do that. Okay. So right now we have everything prepped and ready to go onto the grill outside. Grilling and chilling. So since we have officially ran out of cubic feet in our oven, we're going to take the party outside. Okay, y'all, we're going down to the grill now. We have 15 minutes left on the potatoes, which is enough time to get it heated, get these on there, haul butt back, get the potatoes, go back down and get the chicken. Follow me. My partner, right there, Joe. Welcome to the humble abode we are poolside. <laughs> Also pointing out, it is very much sub summer weather here. It feels delightful. <laughs> Not cold at all. I'm imagining myself falling. <laughs> Not the chicken! <laughs> I would have ripped it off. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine hitting the wind.
lot heavy. And we will we will we will two speed that for you post editing. Okay, that looks a little crunchy. Okay, like Mr. Miyagi, scrape on and scrape off. Seen too many TV shows, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and assume that it's gonna need medium high heat. It's a lot harder to tell on these bad boys. Or at least we'll do high until it heats up. So as it's heating, I would like to take some time and explain the nature of the meal prep, which means Ultimately, you're not gonna get it right on your first try. I've been doing this year at, for years and sucking at it for years. Am I in frame? Good, okay. So it's a practice of practice. <laughs> so ultimately, you're gonna get better at it the more you do it. Don't expect it to go for well the first time. I've eaten probably hundreds of these that I have absolutely, there's not a word for it, it's horrible. <laughs> So I'm gonna spare you that pain and show you these wonderful uh, techniques and recipes for you to develop on your own. It's a growing experience. So I'm here to we're here to grow together and stuff like that. Okay, so push pause. Okay. Okay, my brews and my bras. We have it heated up to about 250 degrees right now. We have it on medium high, so ultimately it's gonna end up at about 350 or 400. So. We're gonna go ahead, even though it's still preheating, to get it in there because we don't want to miss those potatoes. We're gonna go. Oh, I like the sound of that. I really do. Two. Oh, it smells delicious already, to be honest. To be honest. And there are all those. Blackened. Pepper, garlic it is good to go. There's all those daddies. There, there. And finally, we have what are these things called again? Squash. Kind of squash. <laughs> Better not squash. Better not squash. I apologize for the trembling video. My body's a little cold. You gotta start breathing. Life is all about good food. He runs marathons in the Arctic, and all you have to do is breathe, apparently. <laughs> Take it too long. Get it on there, then we'll figure it out. Yeah, here to party. So we're gonna have to intermix since we do have too much foods for all racks, which is a good sign. We are blessed. Okay. We have to make some room. That's two. Yeah, I know. Slippery, okay. Ah, fit in the room for that, so we just like right there. Alrighty. So we are good to go there. And 
and we were gonna go ahead and take up everything. We're gonna put our alarm for 20 minutes. Probably 15 though, because we don't wanna risk it. Let's go. Action. Okay, y'all, we have gone up back to the potatoes after putting the chicken on, and we have four minutes left on the potatoes. So we're not gonna stand around with our thumbs and our butts, we're gonna get to work. So we're gonna put up everything, get everything cleaned, and utilize time efficiency and such. So, put that back up there. And I highly recommend keeping a organized spice cabinet, not like mine. Okay. Go. Okay, so all the spices are up, took about three minutes, potatoes are ready to come out of the oven. Gah! Dang! And the alarm will go off, so you gotta make sure you wash the, the little smokies. Good to go. So everything's actually ready to come out since it has been 25 minutes. First, we have our broccoli, which is nice and crispy on the outside and looking like it's nice and squishy on the inside. That is exactly how you want those to look. Same thing for the Brussels for the mussels. And we really don't have anywhere to put the uh, potatoes right now. Hold on. So what I'm gonna do You're is gonna recycle the aluminum feather. Aluminum nums, you know what I'm saying? I'm so checking to see if the potatoes are done. We're gonna go ahead and stab these. They're pretty squishy all the way through. I'd say they're pretty much done. They're good to go, my brews and my bras. <gasps> it's potato time. And the alarm is going off that we need to go get the chicken, so we probably need to hustle and bustle. Faster. Oh, Faster. Just delete that one. Oh! Oh! oh. It gets hotter. <laughs> Every potato gets hotter. Potato, you say potato, I say potato. <laughs> okay, potatoes are in. Don't forget to turn your stove off, ladies and gentlemen. It's not worth your life. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go flip that chicken real fast. Don't forget your tongs, we only have one set. We only got 30 seconds, let's go. Okay, it's nice and hot. Also the temperature, 350 degrees. Probably right where it needs to be. Probably 400, given that it probably chilled a little bit. So we got a nice char on the outside of some of these and not on the others, which means some areas of the grill are harder than other areas of the grill. So we're gonna mix and match a little bit. Flip these daddies. Turkey. Those are looking real nice. Real nice. That one and that one, these aren't looking so done to be honest. Sneak that big one down there. They'll get soft. Few times, few times. Okay, so those are gonna need about 15 more minutes. I can tell I look at them. Uh, I'm out of grill space, yo. Not good. Okay, all the big ones are flipped. Little guy. Those are good to go. Hey. Okay. We'll just two speed all this, I guess. Mm -hmm. Speed like salad or whatever. Okay, okay, everything's good. Yeah. I'm gonna hop over this thing. Oh. Back to the crib. And we're gonna get some things popping, but to keep it exciting, this parkour time. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, y'all. <laughs> 10 minutes and we're gonna go check the chicken again. In the meantime, everything is done. So we're not gonna lace around. We talked about the, the, the go-to attitude. And what we're gonna do is get all of our Tupperware, also from Amazon, ready to go. And since I'm currently not employed and going to be at home, we're gonna go ahead and put it, this is for my little brother who actually goes to work so that he can take it to lunch for himself. We're gonna get his ready to go. And this is for all you solo people. If you wanna to go to work, we have four of these. I thought I had a fifth. Where's the fifth? Don't lose it, Ben. He's gonna get one tiny lunch. That'll be on his cardio day. Okay. So we have five meals set up. So this is for five days of the week. That's Monday through Friday of healthiness and wellness. Bring the camera over here, please. So this part's actually pretty simple, simple and straightforward. We're just gonna put potatoes in each of our little guys. Cardio day only gets half a potato. Sucks to suck, dude. Oh. Okay. Second up, we are gonna go ahead and do some brussels okay. for those muscles we so talked about. What we're doing uh, now is we're taking our potatoes and we're rocks slicing them. Rocks. Uh, the horizontal <laughs> vertically, depending on how you want to look. Okay, and we want to leave enough room um, for the chicken. And then we're just going to throw be a some butter in there, some salt that. and pepper, just because we don't so we want bland potatoes. This. And so then the last part, what we need is just what I do is I slice them the the vertically. Well, I should say the stab to eventually twist. Stab, twist, stab. We're going to do this times five. So on and so forth. We have a nice little spot and we're harder to get. Cut. Hot. These potatoes are still hot, ladies and gentlemen. They hold heat. So it's been um, 10 plus 6. It's been 15 minutes. And we're looking at our barbecued chickens. They're looking pretty done. Okay, my brews and my brush. But if you want to, and we have checked grab the one. It is officially done. And you stab it with your fork to see if it is get completely as cooked as through. Because there's nothing worse than drying chicken. This is where you would want a knife. Quote me. But we didn't bring one and we're not running back. I <laughs> little critsy, but that's okay. We are all made differently, ladies and gentlemen. Doesn't mean anyone's better or worse than anybody else. Okay. So we have our chicken on one side and we're gonna have our butternut squash on the other. And for the sake of All right, we are back, chicken is done. We are now loading it in our, into our to-go boxes and we are garnishing it with some color, these butternut squashes covered in honey and cinnamon, which are delicious. And we have and three as you can see, we have all the little ones so, packaged up ready um, to go. This is what, what we the still have will be bulk that you ultimately bring um, to your job potatoes, site. And, broccoli and when you open and this, these. people are gonna be like, oh, so where did you get that? that? Be at home. These would be like, your, I need you know, your children or your spouses. We wanna go ahead and just leave it all so together. So we're gonna go ahead and stuff all the potatoes into a separate container. And I don't think that they're gonna fit, but we're gonna try our best. And if they don't fit, we will make them fit because we are survivors. Key dokey, there those are. There's the lid. And go on top of there. And there we 
go, folks. He's good to go. We have all the baked potatoes we need for a week. And since we ran out of Tupperware, we're gonna put it in the same bowl that we cooked it in and then put foil on top. Recycled foil from the potatoes because we believe in saving the environment. And cut. I took a video of that. Oh, whoa, not gnarly, not gnarly. Is this for the chef? I ate first. <laughs> taste test first must be created, or must be done by the person who cooked the food. Although we appreciate you, Hannah. So to kick it off, just wet my tears for this. We're gonna give this. Uh, we're gonna give the taste test to let you know how everything is gonna go. So we'll start with the broccoli. It's rocking with me. <laughs> it actually really is good though. Brussels for the muscles. Crispy on the outside. A little spicy from the cayenne. Nice and soft in the middle. We're gonna give those a four and a half out of five. Five out of five for the muscles. Uh, we'll do baked potato first uh, with butter and uh, sea salt. Mm. Mm. The internet was right. A crispy skin is definitely better. Mm. Mm. And this is our dessert for healthy people. We have our butternut squash and cinnamon. Honey. Mm. Mm. I didn't clear my palate from the potato but it's still delicious. And I went ahead and pulled out two the both flavors of the chicken so we can sample and examine them both. It is looking a little dry from the black and rub because this particular chicken breast was a little flat, but that's okay, we're all born different. The flavor is delicious. I suspected it is a little dry. The lemon pepper, however, lemon pepper garlic, I should say, Mm. Oh wait, this is a butter garlic, huh? Oh, lemon pepper butter goodness. This one, ladies and gentlemen, 